Yishem Adonai Mevach Matav Dalam Shalom everybody This is our second class today Under Corona Baruch Hashem We, we hope that Corona will never enter our house Except uh, beer, Corona beer I want to thank the Medina's family The Rojas family I want to thank also Jesse Jesse that helped me this week Last week with the computer So I can learn more Torah And, and uh, prepare for these classes uh, Jesse, I'm telling you, is, is a magician with computers. Every problem he can fix, I'm telling you. So this is not only an advertisement, I'm telling you, if you need, I call him uh, for a small amount of, uh, I don't know, $500, how much you charge him? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's very reasonable, very reasonable, and he's really good with computers. If he can fix it, it can be fixed, I can tell you. So. I want to thank also uh, I said the, the, the Rojas family and I want to dedicate this Torah class for Fua Shelema to the Murphy's family especially for Sandy May Hashem send her and her entire family Fua Shelema Fua Tanefesh Fua Taguf Amen If I forget anybody I really apologize and Fua Shelema to Adam Avraham Ben Yardena among all the Cholim of Israel and all those who need um, uh, speedy recovery, may Hashem bless them, Be'ezrat Hashem, to go back to their family, complete and healthy and in, 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 in good condition, with uh, a lot of uh, joy in their life. Simcha, a lot of simcha. Simcha is very important. Simcha can bring people life again. You know, I know, unfortunately, more than one guy that he has, I know he's a millionaire, millionaire. But he doesn't want to wake up in the morning. If he doesn't take six to eight pills a day, a day, he can't function. Wow. And I know this guy personally. So what's the blessing to have millions and you can even enjoy from them? Wow. Okay. Anyways, so who is rich? The one that is happy with what he has. Happy. Huh? With what his luck. Healthy and happy. Believe me, people looking at yes, Bentley and this guy, uh, Martin, and then what is now Tesla. And if Hashem wanted to give you, I'll give it to you. If not, it means for a good reason. God forbid you can do a horrible accident with that. You know? Wealth, it's not an indicator of uh, 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 a good life. Many people pursuing after money all their life and they're missing life, if you know what I mean. Workaholic, and they, they, they're proud of it. Well, you don't know me, I'm a workaholic. You're stupid. Why do you have to work so many hours? <laughs> work certain hours, bring what you can bring to your family and live. Study Torah, enjoy. This is life. This is life to study Torah, to bring your neshama up. You know? So. A blessing is when you're close to Hashem. And the only way to be close to Hashem is follow His instructions. Is to study Torah. Is to give tzedakah. Is to do kindness. That's what Hashem loves. As long as you do these things, Hashem will protect you. Today we're going to study one part, Bezat Hashem, talking about the mockers. Our topic is... Who are they? Who are those who mock God? Some people say, me? <laughs> no, I never mock God. But then when they go after 120 years to Shemaim, they show them the list of sins they made. They see that they killed at least 17 to 18, 20 people. Yeah. Uh, they killed people. And they mock God. And they will say, they will argue. I never killed a fly. I, I see roaches. I run to the other side of the room. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> me? Even one time I clipped and I, and I killed accidentally a mosquito. I took him to burial and I put it. Margaret, I'm telling you, I'm so careful. About, I killed 18 people. I say, yes. When you sometimes embarrass a guy, someone in public, it's considered as if you killed him. And it, right. It says, is as if you killed him. So what did Teshuvah ask for forgiveness? How did I mock God? How you can mock God? 
in which way now you will see today we'll see how you know mocking God is not a it's a horrible thing now we learn how maybe we did it and how we can fix it we love God it's not possible that I killed God I, I, did I mock God now we'll see how <clears throat> go, go ahead one who mocks others because he despises them for not having succeeded as he did in the acquisition of wealth and honor. And he despises the poor not in that he imputes any imperfection to them, but in that they are despicable in his eyes. And this stems from pride or sometimes from tranquility and an abundance of pleasure as it is written in Tehillim 123.4. Our souls are full sated with the mockery of those who are at ease with the contempt of the proud oppressors. Right. If one look at other people, even if you don't say it, in his heart, inside, he feels that they're below him. They didn't succeed as great as he. He don't feel sorry for them, but he feels that they are not in his level. From the outside, you might look nice to them, you will smile to them, hello, hello. but inside, you despise them. But Hashem see your heart. They don't see your heart. Hashem see your heart. And Hashem hates you for that. Because you're smiling and you're stabbing them in the back at the same time. Hashem says, I gave you the blessing. I gave you the wealth. She says, the gold is mine, the silver is mine, the whole world is mine. I give it to you and you use it in, that, in this way. Immediately, disconnections with God. And it's worse when you mock the poor. When you mock the poor, Hashem made them poor, made them because a variety of reasons. You mock them, Hashem said, you're mocking me. Now you know that you're mocking God. You don't even have to say, you don't even have to embarrass them in front of a lot of people. Or one on one. Whatever you feel in your heart. It's called pride. It's called haughtiness. And it's, uh, it's disgusting. In the eyes of Hashem, you're no longer one of His disciples honest disciples or, or um, true disciple. What's the trick? What's the teshuva? Always feel that the one in front of you is either better than you, smarter than you, in any way. If he's poorer than you, then you feel me smarter than me. Maybe he has more mitzvot than me. Maybe he's doing more kindness than me. Always look for a reason why the other guy is better than you. The Ramban in his Igeret point out this point to his son. And he says to his son, if you follow these instructions, whatever you ask from Hashem, Hashem will deliver faster than UPS, FedEx, and USPS. Faster. When Hashem gives, no one can take it from you. When Hashem one day opens his hands to you, it's a blessing, could be till the rest of your life or to generation till Mashiach comes. This is why when you see sometimes people very wealthy nowadays, nonetheless, they don't deserve it. According to our glasses, right? What we see through our glasses. Could be it's because of a promise of, of, of that Hashem gave to a grand, 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 grandfather. Who knows? 300, 400, 500 years ago. Now, they enjoy the benefits, the harvesting, the benefit, the, the, the wheat now. Due to what their grand grand grandfather did. So don't get excited about how uh, I'm in the shul every day, I'm going to do this, why Hashem treat me that way, why I treat him. You don't know his uh, past, you don't know his lineage, his family tree, you don't know what happened. Go ahead. Questions? So no one chooses to be rich or poor? Meaning, you think that one can choose one day I'll be wealthy and I'll be wealthy? One day I'll be poor, I'll be poor? I'm asking the question. 
the answer is the answer is could be and I explain one okay, one can choose to be poor there's a lacha that you can give 20% if you start to give 50% of your wealth you might get poor Hashem gives you and you throw it to the river you're gonna become poor it's easier to become poor than wealthy but your income has been determined every year from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur one day Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah okay it's determined already let's say the number is $100,000 this year 2020 okay Tavshin Peyalev Jewish calendar you worked extra hours you sold three times more than last year you worked extra hours. You got from your boss extra money. You went over the 100000 you have more expenses. So it will eventually, to the cent, to the point, at the end of the year, you'll make 100000 If you work less, you sell less, Hashem will find ways to give you, you complete to the 100000 So what smart men will do? Work more or less? Work less. Not... I'm not saying not to work at all. We're not at that level that we can sit down in the shul in the yeshiva and study all day in the shul. Bring this is very high level. Mundane people like me, average and below, I have to work for my for for living. Okay. Hashem has to, and Hashem will give me what He already decided. Accept your expenses for Shabbat, holidays, sedaka, and uh, kids for Torah. Talmud Torah. When you're sending your kids to Talmud Torah, Hashem will say, don't mitzvah, worry, I'll give it back to you. For mitzvah, for mitzvah, yeah. Mitzvah. Now, can someone knowing then that, to be rich? Huh? can somebody then choose to be rich? Choosing to be rich is just an imagination. Oh, okay. You see more money, but more expenses to come. Well, because I was reading, you know, it says, he mocks a poor person, but the poor person, nobody chooses to be poor. To be? To be poor. Right. A normal person doesn't choose to be poor, but you can choose. Someone can choose to end his life. Yeah. Most people don't. You fight for your life. But you can choose. It's easier to choose. It's, let's put it that way. It's easier to destroy than to build. Okay, I, it takes me a, three years to build a, a building, or one minute to blow it and yeah. breaks it. One minute, boom, 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 collapse. There's one thing I found out that it's easier to build than to this, to to break. It's gaining weight. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier to build. It's very hard to break, <laughs> to destroy. Whatever I'm telling you, that's the only thing. <laughs> okay, continue. Indicating that the tranquil ones are mockers of Israel. And sometimes in the abundance of their tranquility, they mock the righteous and the prophets, as it is written in Yeremiah 27, they all mock me. And it is written in Mishle 17.5, He who mocks the poor man blasphemes his maker. Blasphemes his maker. Why, 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 why? It's a famous story in the Talmud about the son of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Rabbi Elazar. Rabbi Elazar came out of the yeshiva. He studied Torah in a level that we couldn't even understand. There's a pardes, pshat, and then there's also four levels in the Torah. Even in the pshat, the lowest level, there's four levels. In the pshat of the pshat, the remes of the pshat, the rash of the pshat, and the sword of the pshat. Wow. There is an esoteric part of the pshat, of the simple explanation. Wow, wow, it's amazing, amazing. The Torah is endless because it comes from the endless. Yes. Now, he was so into Torah that day, he learned so much. He want, now he's going to uh, Syria, I guess, to give the Rasha, people expecting him. He was riding the donkey in his head. He was in a different world. All of a sudden, he saw a guy walking by him. He looked at him and said, whoa, is everybody in your city as ugly as you? 
<laughs> he looked this guy he was this four D form or something. Nobody expected from Rabbi El Azar, the son of Rabbi Shimon Khan, say something like that. So the guy says, Well, maybe you should address these questions to my maker. <laughs> he eventually I understand what he did. He stopped the donkey, he went to this guy and he fell on the ground, bounding to him, kissing his leg, please forgive me. Okay. And he says, I won't forgive you. He went back all the, uh, the way to the city and he saw a bunch of people going. So where are you going? Oh, expecting, we, we welcoming the rabbi. Mm -hmm. Oh, this rabbi. Maybe no more rabbi like him. What are you talking about? Get out of here. No, no. Long story short, he apologized. He accepted. He gave him condition. Don't do it again. And done. But the Talmud teaches us a great lesson. You see someone ugly slash poor slash I don't know. It's from the maker. Everything happened for a reason. As it says in Proverbs 17.5, Mishle, He who mocked the poor man blasphemes his maker. If Hashem made it that way, it's for a reason. So I was asking. You're questioning him, you're questioning God. It's not your place to make such a comment. You could be Moshe Rabbeinu. Thing happens for a reason. That forbids people something. get sometimes a child that is not healthy. Why a shame? You did it to me. What happened here? And the doctors will give you all the reasons in the world. It's a um, shortage of air in the birth. The mother was sick. The father was sick. Uh, both were sick. It's a good. It's a reasons. It's reason on the pshat level, on the simple level. But. If someone was chosen to raise such a child, there's a reason why Hashem put this soul in your family. Because you're worthy, because you can, and more reasons. Why, a woman asked me, it's a famous question, but she asked me, why, by why Hashem don't give me one time, four child and one birth? Let me finish it. <laughs> They get it over with. Or two twins, two birth. One. Why I have to be birth after birth after birth? So I told her, because Hashem knows your strength. If Hashem give you God to be two, maybe you, you'll die. Yeah. Not every woman can carry, uh, you know, or twins or three or, or, or triple or, or quadruple. What? quadruple. Everything happens for a reason. If someone born in a family in a certain way, it's you are chosen and it's for a good reason when you know that this is your mission in this world you treat this child differently usually usually most of the house most of the uh, families that has such a child is the most beloved one the family are more sensitive to him one of the reasons is because they're giving him a lot giving meaning equal love the more you give, the more you love. Also to Hashem. The more you give, the more you love. And how you give? Mitzvot, chesed, kainet, tzedaka. But remember, everything happens for a reason. Accept what Hashem gives in this world and move on with this. Do it the best as you can. It happens for a reason. Okay. I read something very beautiful which is... Uh, it says in the Torah that the poor will be forever, right? Yeah. The poor will be forever. Always, okay. Yeah. So I read a beautiful commentary. It's, it, it says that the reason they will be forever is wow, because wow. those who don't give tzedakah, they will replace them, right? Okay. And, and it says yeah. also that, that they are always there because their misery is upon them and that you should always remember that yours is not upon you, so you should be, it reminds you to give. And that, that to me, I was like, wow, oh, that's, 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 that's nice. What do you think about that? I want to think the Talmud says is that that's what it is. It, it's, a, it's for people to g have the opportunity to give. This is a conversation between Rabbi Akiva and another. Um, okay, let me just finish that because I have. A <coughs> that is, he who marks the poor man because he is poor, considering him poor because of the lack of wisdom, and he himself rich as a result of his wisdom, as it is written in Devarim eight seventeen. My power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. Such a mocker blasphemes the Blessed One, 
for all is the work of the Blessed One, as it is written in Mishlei 22.2. The rich and the poor have met. Hashem has made them all. He is, the, he is therefore, mocking the handiwork of Hashem. Right. You know, I will conclude with saying that the worst thing ever to say is the words, my power and my might of my hand had gained me this wealth. Hashem says, it's true. So I'm leaving you in your hands. See how you can handle life. At the end of the day, everyone, or at the end of the days also, literally, everyone meet at the same place. The poor and the wealthy guy, they all eventually go down, being covered with dust, and that's it. What's considered is what Hashem, taken under consideration, is your behavior in this world. What did you do in this world? in spite of all the difficulties or I mean with your wealth and with your poverty different people we are different different people have different experience in life and everything happens for a reason why are you born in this family this one is wealthy and I'm poor and why it is leave the questions till your neshama will go for Hashem then you get all the answers remember the long in the first class when you don't learn you don't <laughs> You have a lot of questions. When you start alone, you get answers. Yeah. Would the Torah give you all the answers to it? Probably not. We're not in that level. But when Mashiach comes, he will give us all the answers. I want to thank everybody for participating in this show. There's not Hashem next week. And at the same time, we'll let you know. There's not Hashem, same place. We will meet here together with good health and wealth. Amen. Amen. And, and with Simcha Amen. and on behalf of Ohev Israel Foundation thank you I want to wish everybody Beracha and Atzlacha and especially to the, the, the names I mentioned in the beginning of this class whatever you do to help Ohev Israel it's nothing but blessing and to Daraba especially also to Yafa Medina that helping Ohev Israel from day one I shall bless you with Nacha with all your children you should have a long life and healthy family. Amen. 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 Amen.